Giving a spiritual treatment is like accepting an artistic commission. You bring into play much of the same attitudes and practices. So I'd like to use a recent commission to illustrate the similarity of bringing into manifestation a work of art and of dealing with material problems from a spiritual perspective. In both instances, you are presented with a problem. Materially, the problem can be of a physical, emotional, or financial situation. Artistically, you want to express beauty in its highest form with the materials that you use. Beauty and truth are spiritual ideas. A treatment brings into expression the various aspects of those ideas. For example, beauty is harmonious. Beauty is sublime. Beauty takes you out of the ordinary, that lazy state of consciousness that tolerates chaos and discord, into the truth of spiritual creation. Truth is inviolate. It exists in a state of perfection, untarnished, by time and material concept. The problem confronting me in this commission was that the client wanted a version of a painting I had done to be made into a tile mural. The expression of paint on canvas does not translate well into glazed tile. The painting was spontaneous, an expression in the moment. A tile mural takes detailed planning and hours of intricate work. And my client wanted a horizontal painting to be reimagined into a vertical composition. I could have said it couldn't be done, but then I would have been denying myself the opportunity to watch how the universal creative consciousness would fulfill itself in an expression of truth and beauty. When confronting a problem affecting your well-being, you have a choice. You can accept the limitations of the problem and live with those restrictions, or you can drop all concepts about the problem and let your developed spiritual consciousness bring you into harmony with the Creator. To do anything that gives the problem a sense of power is counterproductive. Resisting the problem will not lead to a solution. Fighting the problem will not change it. And ignoring it just lets it exist. The problem is in your experience to give you the opportunity to practice your spiritual or artistic skills, and ultimately it is the impersonal universal consciousness that brings the solution. The solution, artistically, is to bring something new into creation. The solutions for dealing with problems interfering with your harmony are one, to withdraw power from the problem, and two, to discover the truth about the spiritual reality behind the appearance. Remember, God is the substance of all form and idea, and that substance can only be expressions of truth. If there is no truth, or beauty, or harmony, and peace associated with a problem, it has no substance, and thus exists not in reality, but in human concept. And human concepts are always changing. Once a spiritual or creative activity is engaged, Consciousness takes over. But again, you must do a couple of things. You must have the skills to let consciousness reveal the truth, and you must let go of personal ego. The ego would suggest that the artist make something he or she has already made, go for the success rather than risk the ego on something new. In the case of translating a painting into a mural, everything was new except the subject. And many artists use the same subject over and over again. Part of the artistic experience is seeing how deep you can go into the subject. Can you discover the essence of what you are observing and bring that essence into a new expression? The ceramics piece I was going to make required many drawings and expert planning to engineer how the mural would fit into its environment and promote beauty. For the mystic, after taking the initial steps in detaching yourself from the problem by withdrawing whatever power the problem seems to present, and after bringing yourself into alignment with spiritual reality, the next step, which is the essence of healing, is to remain as still as possible and let consciousness reveal the truth. This revelation is the point at which the healing is complete. For the artist, that same practice reveals when the image is complete. 
unless the problem disappears spontaneously, which happens when misconceptions come into contact with the realized presence of God, the mystic begins to work. This is also treatment, but it is the backside of the realization. Now you know the impotence of the problem, but symptoms or appearances are still with you. So you work with the same principles, but now you are addressing the problem through your skills as a practicing mystic. Just as the artist must engineer the clay, bringing everything he or she knows about working the medium to fulfill the vision, the mystic uses his or her skill to pierce the illusions so that they keep the truth in their experience. Piercing the illusion requires practice and conviction. Remember, the appearance has come from human belief and the experience of human cause and effect. But the experience of oneness, the experience of the silence, breaks the cycle of cause and effect. Every time you feel the presence of the divine in the stillness of a quiet mind, you disrupt the activity of mortal belief. Your skill in disrupting the patterns of matter is in proportion to your ability to rest in the silence. Every mystic knows there is nothing more powerful than the silence. The reason that is true is that in the silence you are one with all spiritual form and idea. You experience the substance of life in that oneness. And soon you begin to see that which is behind the appearance. And when you do see nothing behind the appearance but belief, you relax because there's no power there. This seems to take time, but like the artist carving clay, time is also an illusion. The artist is in the now when working creatively. Soon the vision that came about in the beginning, the feeling that this is the beautiful, the good and the true, begins to take form. Perhaps not every piece is ideal, but those errors are easily corrected. It is only the beginner who looks at a mistake and thinks everything is ruined. The master knows that life is a constant unfolding and that life is always moving toward the impeccable vision of beauty and truth. Constant refinement is the way of the mystic. In an art project as complicated as a ceramic mural, the individual pieces are always subject to refinement. That refinement isn't altering the original vision, it is making it more perfect. We're not perfect in the flesh, and the flesh is in constant change. The perfect expression of being is unseen. It is experienced in mystical oneness, and that individual experience affects the material manifestations that occur in our lives. Every aspect of our life is a piece of the composition that constitutes our individual expression of the divine. Some pieces can be recarved early on. Other pieces may already have been bisque fired and need to be remade. And even later on, in realizing the fullness of being, some pieces need to be remade after the glaze firing. What appears as life is a combination of spiritual realization and the acceptance of material belief. As the belief that there is power in material cause and effect diminishes, the personal attachment to the appearances generated by those beliefs loosen, and the vision of the beautiful and the true become more real to the individual. Our experiences in this parentheses of life build a legacy of spiritual awareness. Each experience that reveals the nature of reality diminishes the perceived power of material cause and effect. These experiences build our consciousness of truth and create the skills to reinterpret the universal beliefs in material power into the revelations of spiritual reality. Every time we complete a project or experience a healing, we increase our ability to tackle even more challenging projects or problems.